What's up y'all, Square White here. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to ride a motorcycle. So, my intention with this video is to take people from complete beginners who've never ridden a motorcycle like I was when I started, to at least being able to identify the parts on a bike and turn it on successfully, put it in first gear, and cruise around a parking lot somewhere. So first things first, um, where your key at is going to be different on different bikes. So mine, for example, chills right here. Um, that's on. I can turn my lights on. For a lot of sport bikes, it'll usually be like up near the top of the triple tree. That's what uh, this thing is here. And you know, it'll be just a, a simple flick. Uh, I think some Harleys have them on the side like this, or they could be on the right side of the bike. But one thing that will remain the same on, I mean, nearly every bike out there is gonna be the layout. So you're gonna have the clutch on the left handlebar. You're gonna have the throttle on the right handlebar, along with the front brake. So kind of like on a, if you've ever ridden a bicycle before, you'll have the brakes activated by levers. Uh, it's gonna be similar in that respect. So this down here is gonna be the shifter. So on my bike and on most bikes, first gear is gonna be pushing it down. Neutral is gonna be a half pull up. And then second through, in my case, I have six gears. So second through sixth is gonna be pulling up on that shift lever. On the other side, we have the rear brake. And this rear brake is gonna be very important when we're starting out. So first things first, uh, when you get on a bike, I believe you're supposed to approach from the left side. So you get on, get on, get situated. Make sure that your kickstand is up. Uh, a lot of bikes won't let you start them with the kickstand engaged like that. So before we even turn it on, you just wanna get comfortable with where your controls are. So like I said, you've got the clutch on the left, front brake on the right, shifter down here on the bottom left, brake on the bottom right. The easiest way for me to think about it is shifting is controlled on the left side of my body, braking is controlled with the right side. Now for me, I'm right-handed, that's pretty convenient. Works out pretty well. Uh, good motor control. So first, first thing you do, sit on the bike and get a feel for the weight. Now I'm on a cruiser and plus I'm just a tall guy. So I can flat foot this bike easily. I've got room to spare. But without putting too much weight on it, just feel where the center of gravity is. You can feel where it kind of wants to start tilting, where I've got to actually engage my quads to keep the bike up. Get a feel for what it's like, you know, walking it around. So just waddle, waddle, waddle. We're like a, we're like a Harley boy at a light. He's got to waddle it. You know, see how much uh, free play you have with the wheel before you, or I'm sorry, with the handlebar before it locks out. One thing that surprised me when I first uh, got this bike, actually, is how small of, I don't know, a radius, how small of a movement you can actually make. Okay, so on most bikes, you should be able to feel the front brake kick in as you squeeze the lever. So before we've even started, you've gotten a feel for the weight and the movement of the bike. Now I want you to get a feel for the brakes. What this is going to do, it's going to teach you about how far you need to pull this front brake lever, which is again on the right, before it really kicks in. On my bike, there's a little bit of a squeeze and then clamp. 
clamp. And it'll actually shift the balance of the bike, which is kind of interesting. So to start the bike, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the key into the on position. And we're gonna look for any kind of indicator that we are in neutral. So on my bike, I've got this green neutral indicator, and it also tells me what gear I'm in, what gear I'm in here on the bottom left. So once we confirm that we're in neutral, we're gonna pull the clutch in. That will disconnect the transmission from the engine, meaning the bike won't go anywhere. We'll turn the fuel pump on by turning the switch, and then we'll hit the ignition button. And we're off. So the second thing that I'm gonna do from here, I'm taking my left foot up, and I put the bike in first gear. Now what we wanna do here is we wanna explore the friction zone. So what the friction zone is, it's a small area controlled by your clutch lever, which is over here on the left, remember? And there's a little bit of slip where if you release the clutch just a little bit, the transmission will catch and you'll start moving forward a little bit. So what I wanna do here is just feel where that friction zone starts. And you do that by very slowly letting go of the clutch lever. And then squeeze it in. It disconnects the transmission from the engine. The bike will not move anywhere. Feel it catch, pull in. Feel it catch, pull in. So do that for a little bit. As long as it takes you to feel like you know how far you can release your grip on the clutch lever while that friction zone catches you. So once you've done that for a little bit, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, friction zone cruising. So walk the bike a little bit, take a couple of steps, and then pull the clutch in. We'll do it a couple of times here. And then pull the clutch in. Now you see I'm covering the front brake. Uh, the front brake is where the majority of your braking power comes from on motorcycles, and usually cars as well. But it's more important on a motorcycle because you only have two wheels. So that braking power, let me, uh, let me get turned around here. So that braking power is really dictated by just that one wheel. What we're gonna do here is, again, we're just gonna keep going along. Take a couple steps, clutch in, and lightly squeeze the front brake, come to a stop. Let the clutch out, take a couple of steps. We're waddling, we're Harley boys. Clutch in, front brake, come to a stop. Now, one of the hardest things for me when I was learning to ride was in not stalling the bike. The key to not stalling your bike is as you're releasing the clutch, you do a little bit of throttle. So I'm just gonna show you, if we're coming from a dead stop like now, you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'm slowly, I'm letting the friction zone take control. And then I rev the engine just ever so slightly. Now we're off, we're off to the races. Now, every bike is different. On my bike, there's a fair amount of torque. So I can actually, I can move just using the friction zone. I don't need to use my throttle whatsoever. So for me, starting from a dead stop is fairly easy because I can combine that large friction zone with some of the throttle. Your bike, it may not be the case, so I really want you to practice. Let me come to a stop again. 
once you feel that clutch start to enter the friction zone, very gently, a very smooth, light touch on the throttle. Start accelerating. Then you can let go of the throttle. You're now in first gear. Don't worry about the balance. If you know how to ride a bike, then you'll be able to balance on a motorcycle. It's not difficult whatsoever. In fact, I would say it's a bit easier than a bicycle because you have the engine and the wheels wanting to keep you upright. Uh, you know, thank God for physics, right? Uh, let's talk about neutral. So as you can see right now, my gear selector isn't showing anything. That's because I've got the clutch pulled in. If I let go of it, oh, if I let go of it, it says that I'm in first. So if you're going to ride a bike, you're going to need to know how to go in between first and neutral. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So right now I've got the clutch pulled in, my, so there's no power going to the rear wheel. I can move the bike forward and back however I want, but I'm going to click a half click. I'm going to pull up ever so slightly, and I'm in neutral. That means I can let go of the clutch, the bike won't stall out. If I were to try to do that, if I were to try to do that in first, which again is a click down, if I let go of the clutch, it stalls. It tries to bite out, um, I lose control, stall. So you really, you're gonna do it as a new rider, even as an experienced rider, you're gonna do it. But we, we don't wanna be doing that all day to our bike, right? So again, oh, I'm in first right now. So again, just a slight click up, and I'm in neutral. I can let go. If I click it down, first gear, and I'm off. So the next thing we're going to talk about is shifting. Uh, hopefully you have a large enough parking lot that you can practice it in. Unfortunately, I don't. Because on most bikes, shifting will be anywhere from First gear going up to about 15 to 20 miles an hour uh, per the manual. I mean, you can go a lot faster than 20 miles an hour in second gear. So here's how, here's the steps that you take to shift. You pull the clutch in, you select your gear, you slowly release the clutch and you apply throttle. So I'm in first gear right now. Once the bike is telling me via sound that it wants to shift up, I let go of the throttle, pull up on the shift lever, slowly release the clutch, and slowly put on the throttle. I'm gonna do the same thing to come up into third, roll off throttle, pull clutch in, click up, slowly release throttle, slowly pull on the gas. Now, it usually is going to happen a lot faster than that. And the better you get, the easier it'll be. But as with everything motorcycle related, it's going to come down to muscle memory and dedicated practice. I spent a lot of time going around this loop that I'm about to show you. Uh, trying to get used to upshifting and downshifting. Now downshifting is going to be the exact same process. You're going to push forward on the throttle, pull the clutch in, click down, and then slowly release the, the clutch, and then slowly pull on the gas if you need to. There's a lot of more advanced techniques 
that you can use. Uh, there's clutchless upshifting, which looks like that. Uh, there's clutchless downshifting. If you're on a newer sport bike, you may even have quick shifters, which remove a lot of the having to pull the clutch in. Now, the advice about when to shift is also pretty important. Now, the beauty of a manual transmission is that you can determine when it's important for you to shift and when it's not. If you want to carry a lot of speed through a certain corner, uh, let me pull in the clutch here. If you want to carry a lot of speed through a corner, uh, if you know you need to accelerate quickly, there, there's all types of reasons why it's important to be able to control your acceleration. And in an automatic, you don't necessarily get that choice, but you can do it all day, every day, uh, in a manual. But my rule of thumb for just regular street riding, not spirited, not trying to impress anybody, is I match the gear to the number of miles per hour I'm doing. So I'm in first gear at around 10 miles an hour. Second gear, again, around 20 miles an hour. Third gear at 30, fourth gear at fourth, so on and so forth. There's always going to be exceptions. Uh, but again, all of that is kind of advanced and you don't need it. So let's come to the stop sign. Let's do a little bit of practice right here. So I'm manually downshifting all the way down to first because I know I'm going to come to the stop sign and I'm not going anywhere else. Once this light turns green, I'm going to slowly release the clutch and pull the throttle just ever so slowly. I don't want to stall out. Coming up to lights used to give me a little bit of anxiety because I used to stall out all the time. Shift up to second. Shift up to third. And I can kind of cruise here. Once you're at a decent engine speed, and really just once you're at a decent vehicle speed, you don't have to be holding on to the throttle at all times in order to keep your bike from stalling. here so I happen to know that there's a, a little bit of a tricky right hand turn coming up I see that the roads are a little bit there's a little bit of dampness it rained earlier today so I'm gonna go ahead and downshift into third so what I'm going to do, pull throttle in, click down, release clutch, and throttle. So I want to be in third for this turn. What I'm looking for when I judge turns and how fast I should be going is how much of a slight throttle can I maintain through the turn. So I'm going to accelerate here, clutch in, click up. Full throttle. Really full throttle? That's what she sounds like. This turn again. Gonna rev match a downshift. Take the turn. I could have probably taken that in fourth gear, but again, unless you're unless you're doing really technical riding, it doesn't really matter. So, shifting up again, are they fracking over here now, digging a well, uh, they're probably digging a well, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to come up to this gas station up here on the left.
So in a situation like this, instead of downshifting, just banging through all the gears, match your speed. So I'm at 40 miles an hour now. Pull my brakes on, downshift again. You match your speed in case the light turns green, uh, in case anything like that happens. Braking, gonna downshift, downshift again. Now I'm doing the rev match downshift, but you can do a traditional downshift as well. So I'm not on the throttle, pulling the clutch, release. Now it's important to note. Everything you do with the clutch should be slow and gentle. Because you'll either stall out, or if you're shifting either up or down, you will make the rear wheel behave unpredictably, and you can lead to an accident. 